my words, wrap around her body and glove her like a pair of Speedos at a surfboard championship because she deserves Purple Mountain and Mad Mini, separated mm -hmm. and then given to her at different times because she doesn't get enough festivity crossing her doorstep. She's always taken care of, but hardly ever gets kept, so I want these letters to fall off my pages like pennies out of my pocket with the fountain of forever, so she will forever be eternal, even before her eternity, because see, she dies sometimes and she thinks I don't know, but I do. She's so stressed her hair jumps ship before she can even pull it out. She is a virtual prisoner in her own life's confinement, and she feels solitary, buried under a blizzard of snow that won't even put out her fire. She doesn't understand why her life went this way. I saw it through her glasses the other day, but I couldn't even get dependable eye contact to look, to look directly back her way. Yes, I could still feel the splash of her tears as they fell against her cheeks and expired into my skin. She looked like a three-year-old when she wiped the depression from her face, and my blood turned to dust when she was pregnant, holding capital lies, secrets, and lowercase print. It was a cold night in December when I saw a halo hanging over a ballpoint pen. Poetry is my walk-in closet. Kick your feet up in my den of lyrical equity. I do the opposite of what is expected of me. I started writing to make sense out of the senseless. My five senses wouldn't let me miss this, but the ink went blank, so I put my tongue on the tip. And because I am a poet, I ain't been right ever since. I fear my own lyrical mortality more than my final casket lay. But once I get here, in this space, my own personal Pluto, this here capsule of poetry, the proven history of this violence is that I come alive up here so much that when you see me sitting, consider me in my post-mortem pose, post-mortem prose, lights out, everybody knows the dying is so easy, that's why I say so pen sick, and almost every time I spit, and you will literally see me spit, and I really hate that shit, but this is me living, taking a breath I only get to engulf when I am with you, I guess you could say I wish we lived together, shocked up and ringless, menage life me, you, me and the stage, and I don't need a mic for this, this is me alive. Not deny or to accept or, or appreciate or all of the above uh, that I have a talent for writing that I am gifted in writing um, that has taken a lot of work in itself but um, it is a gift and it's such a gift to be a writer like to be able to scribe to be able to describe to be able to um, express whether you're sharing it or leaving it on the page like the ability to write is incredible mm -hmm. and it's such an incredible gift that it shouldn't be a gift that you deny to your own self yeah. um, it's really easy to look at other other gifts and think well I'm just a writer I'm not a singer I can't open up my mouth and beautiful notes come out and everybody stands on their feet and wants to see me in concert and book me across the country I'm just a writer I'm not a, a trained ballet dancer. Nobody wants to hire me for you know the ballet to go do the swan, the black swan thing, and, and <laughs> Cinderella and all that stuff. I'm just a writer. I got respect that I address you. Admission 3,461, maybe even 62. I praise you. Like white stacks of pins, I split you in three, take you in increments, consuming you slowly. Me. I taste particles of dirt on you and love you anyway. Why don't you say I'm a nigga to you? Bringing out the kooky in me. No more prom queen. Nothing left to see here but a fiend making stars seem close enough to touch you. A purified raindrop. Frozen upon ice mountains. Quenching my every thirst. I take you. I drink you by the bottle. You are what feels good. So soothing to the throat. You are everything I don't want and anything I do need. And you feel so right. You feel so wrong. You feel so good. So so good to the frequent touch, love, spinning me backwards and forwards, thrusting me into oceans. Broke is when I can't afford the either or. Broke is when I elect to take a hard vote. We're going to pay this energy bill or this car note. Mm. Broke is when the idea of paying both bills never enters the barricades <laughs> of my mind because, nigga, both is not an option. It's simple. I either keep my heat on or I drive. Broke is when I unanimously vote to drive. <laughs> because in my city, the public transportation stays on delay like freedom and procrastination. We're overly dependent on cargo, so being late to my third job one more time is a hard no. Plus, my boss is a flaccid dick, and my tolerance, yeah. and my tolerance is completely out of ass to kiss. If it wasn't for the weight of parole, I'd probably quit. And with this bankrupt management, all the hours I sweat don't appear on my checks. 
My pay stub got stuffed up by the bereft of pay of wage theft. My only success is I have not given my boss a fade yet. <laughs> For those who don't know what a fade is, that's like punching somebody and you hit them in the head and a fade is like a haircut. <laughs> Alright. So, um, broke was my, when I alarm my people that I'm getting robbed. Well, praise white Jesus, the God of my ungainful employment. What's broke? Broke is when people hate your broke ass for experiencing enjoyment. Ronald Reagan, the devil himself, was basically <laughs> quoted saying, welfare queens don't deserve nice things, so sister, please don't post the boast about a joyful moment, because it's only proper you grind every second that your heart pumps and your breath offers, well, that's until your mountain high blood pressure wrecks you and you collapse from a heart attack. Broke is when it's not so simple when people say, why don't you just go to the hospital? Mm -hmm. Well, because I can't afford to heal from an emergency bill. Mm -hmm. So what do y'all suggest? Broke is when being broke is the cause of death. Mm -hmm. What's broke? Broke is torture. Broke is when you can't afford to keep the child or abortion. Broke mm -hmm. is a desperate mother selling orphans to pimps, rich white benefactors, and human traffickers. Mm -hmm. Broke is the black child mortality rate per capita. Broke is when your mother don't have enough food for the both of you. What's love? Love is when there's no debate who she's gonna choose. Mm -hmm. What's broke? Broke is when the rules for the Hunger Games change. Taco Bell in my blank top tank top t-shirt dress with no underwear and I feel the sweat pool underneath my breasts that are smaller now after the baby but softer and the men smoking on the porch at the boarding house on Belmont give my son candy and tell him he's a big man and the grounds of Central State just off Warman are where I go when I need to be loved and caressed and told I am beautiful without getting on my knees first and my dog Ahab runs ahead of me, stopping to gnaw at garbage while the red hawk that lives there dives and swoops. And we walk until we come to a great tree, a tree with all of the west side inside it, all of Indiana, all of the Midwest maybe. And if you know the way, which we do, you can turn your body sideways and just miss the poison ivy. And then you're inside my room. I share it with a world of someone's I've never met before. There's a ramen packet that's been there for a year, and sometimes I leave books or closed cigarettes, and sometimes I find condoms, and sometimes there's a bed made up by a rusty shopping cart. They'll cut it down for someone's condo, probably. And the juncture of New York and the railroad tracks in Stringtown is where Rick Fuller, who has no teeth but is still sexy as fuck in the crazy Stringtown or the bougie River West, the new developers want to call it. Walking home from the library last summer, pushing the stroller past the corner of Belmont and Michigan where a girl was killed in a drive-by one night after she got off her shift at, the, at Patsy's show club is a mural shrine to Courtney Page, who is a dancer at Patty's show club. Can't edit while you <laughs> This summer, my son was still in diapers and air hot as hell and muggy like menudo on a Sunday morning. He said, shh, mama, that dog is sleeping and stuck a chubby hand out of the stroller shade and into the sun. And it's true, the dog was sleeping in the grass between the sidewalk and the road right across from the pink and blue letters remembering Courtney Page. Courtney Page, born on the same year as me, on the same day as me. I don't know what day she died, so all I know is that her death shrine lists my birthday. I don't know what day she died, but I know her little girl, who's a little older than my son, likes to eat craft singles between slices of Wonder Bread while she rides her bike down the sidewalk between her house and mine. And that when I moved here, her... This is called uh, the Rice of a Life Party. Three women from down the road beat four pools of revived memory into my newly widowed grandmother. They consoled her into remembering a different marriage as other women had done for them. They called it the Rice of a Life Party. Their husband's rigid fists became hands grid with plant soil, and instead of bruises down their thighs, they saw hickeys planted, booby traps along their collarbones. Soon my grandmother no longer remembered the liquor steaming from Grandpa's spoon like smoke at the end of a cigarette, and could only picture him in the brown suit he wore to work night. At his funeral, she spoke of his invisible burdens as if finally seeing them clearly. Lucifer was misunderstood. Just do the compassion, she energized, and gave a copy to every mourner. She put one in her husband's grave. She could come to her in a dream. Mm -hmm. Her new baby inside the house, the car running in a closed garage, but he tells me about it. I don't know Jeff, but he's known his daughter her whole life. Together, despite this, we gave the why out to strangers. Together, we speak grief into existence, and we know the smallness of ourselves inside ourselves. I put my hand on his 
the shoulder to touch break 